Today I am discussing about three coccidian parasite, Isospora belli, Cyclospora, and Cryptosporidium. First about Isospora belli or Cysto Isospora belli. Isospora belli is a coccidian parasite which causes diarrhea in humans. It is more commonly seen in tropical and subtropical countries, and the human intestinal disease caused by Isospora belli is called Isosporiasis. Then about its morphology. The oocyst of Isospora belli is elongate ovoid and measure about 25 micrometer into 15 micrometer and each oocyst is surrounded by a thin smooth two layered cyst one. It is the immature oocyst and it is the mature oocyst. In the immature oocyst which are found in the feces of the patient contain two sporoblasts and the oocyst mature outside the body. On maturation sporoblasts converted into sporocyst each contain four crescent shaped sporozoids. So, the sporulated oocyst containing 8 sporocytes outside the body is the infective stage. In the bottom pic, it is mature. Figure C is mature oocyst and A and B are immature oocyst. Then about its life cycle. Isospora belli completes its life cycle in on host. The man get infection by ingestion of food and water contaminated with the mature sporulated oocyst. Then swallow of the sporulated oocyst. Then 8 sporocytes are released from two sporocysts in the small intestine and invade the intestinal epithelial cells. In the epithelium, sporocytes transform into trophocytes which multiply asexually that is the schizogony and produce number of merocytes. The merocytes invade the adjacent, adjacent epithelial cells to produce or, or repeat the asexual cycle. Some of the trophocytes undergo sexual cycle, that is the gametogony in the cytoplasm of the enterocytes and transform into macro and microgametocytes. After fertilization, the zygote is formed, that is in the bottom part, uh, zygote is formed and which is secrete a cyst one and develop into immature oocyst. The immature oocyst are excreted in feces and which are mature in the soil and the cycle repeats so on. The incubation period is 1 to 4 days. Then the clinical features. The infection is usually asymptomatic, abdominal discomfort, mild fever, water diarrhea, without uh, blood or pus, and it is self-limiting, and also malnutrition is present. In immunocompromised patient, protracted diarrhea, that is a prolonged diarrhea lasting for several years, are present. Then about its lab diagnosis. First about the stool examination. On stool examination, indirect evidence such as High fecal fat content, fatty acid crystals in stool and charcoal laden crystals in stool are good. These are the charcoal laden crystals in stool. Then about the direct evidence. Stool concentration technique are required when the direct wet mode is negative and a modified Zill Nielsen stain or Canyon acid fast stain are used. We get pink colored acid fast, large oocyst of greater than 25 micrometer. Then auramine, rhodamine and gemstone stains are other stain used. Then of the duodenal aspirate. Duodenal aspirate examination of enterotest demonstrate the oocyst. It is the enterotest. Then intestinal biopsy. This for the demonstration of oocyst. In the smear, we can see uh, microgamid that is with the more uh, granules in the cytoplasm. And uh, microgamids, the uh, granular appearance in the cytoplasm is very less. And uh, the other diagnosal feature is the eosinophilia. These are the three different forms of oocyst of Isospora belli. Then about the treatment. No treatment is indicated in self-limiting infections in immunocompetent persons. And in immunodeficient persons, cotrimoxazole, trimetodoprim sulfamidoxazole, two doses four times per day for 10 days, followed by two doses two times per day for three weeks are prescribed. Then pyrimidamine. 50 to 70 milligram per day for patient intolerant to sulfonamides are given. Then cotrimoxazole one tablet thrice a week is for the maintenance therapy for AIDS patient. Prevention and control. Proper hygiene, food and water precaution and proper waste disposal are preventive methods. Then about cryptosporidium parva. It is another important coccidian parasite. It is an important pathogen causing dairy in animals and humans. It is frequent cause of intractable diarrhea in uh, AIDS and uh, immunocompromised patients. It has a worldwide distribution and habitat mainly in the small intestine other than small intestine, stomach, appendix, colon, rectum, pulmonary, other habitats. 
then about its morphology the oocyst which is the infective form which is about a 5 micrometer in diameter and spherical oval shaped and it does not stain with iodine and it is acid fast the wall of the oocyst is thick and in about 20 percentage of cases it the wall is thin the thin walled oocyst is responsible for the auto infection both the thick walled and thin walled oocyst contain four crescent shaped sporozoids the oocyst has a long period of viability in the environment had a rest it is hard resistant to most of the disinfectant and temperature up to 60 degrees celsius and however it can survive in the chlorinated water sequential application of the ozone and chlorine is effective in eliminating the cyst then about its life cycle it is monogenous that is it completed its life cycle in one host as similar to isosporin and a suit, a suitable host is man a reservoir are man cattle cat dog and the mode of transmission is ingestion of contaminated food and water and also auto infection the infective form is spore related oocyst so it is a pictorial representation the main acute infection by ingestion of contaminated food and water containing thick walled oocyst the existation of the oocyst occur in the small intestine and releases sporozoids and the sporozoids attached to brush border epithelium of the intestine we can see the sporozoids which are intracellular but extra cytoplasmic more accurately it is in the brush border so the sporozoids which are ad attached to the attached to the brush border epithelium of the intestine uh, develop into trophozoids and the trophozoids undergo schizogony that is a asexual cycle in the mucosal cell and produce type 1 merode and the type 1 merode contain 8 merozoids and which are released and which invade the adjacent intestinal cells and get converted into merode 1 so the schizogony cycle repeated and the sum of the merozoids uh, develop into type 2 merode and which contain four merozoids and which are released and which are developed into macro and microgametes and on fertilization type zygote is developed and the uh, the zygote develops into thick walled unsporulated oocyst and thin walled unsporulated oocyst the thick walled unsporulated oocyst which is uh, converted into thick walled sporulated oocyst in the feces and host so it has uh, infection to another person and the thin walled unsporulated oocyst cause auto infection in the same person it is another uh, pictorial representation of a life cycle uh, the disease is mostly waterborne then about its pathogenicity and clinical features it has an incubation period of 2 to 14 days it is uh, in immunocompetent person asymptomatic or self-limiting febrile illness water diarrhea abdominal pain nausea weight loss or pressure childhood and travelers diarrhea and waterborne outbreaks are also caused by this pathogen in immunocompromised person chronic persistent diarrhea and remarkably profuse uh, fluid and electrolyte depletion, depletion and uh, weight loss emaciation and abdominal pains are present stool volume varies from 1 liter per day to 25 liter per day and uh, also biliary tract involvement uh, result in the right upper quadrant pain, sclerosing chronogenitis and polycystitis. Then about the lab diagnosis, mainly stool examination for the demonstration of the oocyst in feces. Direct wet mount, in direct wet mount, colorless spherical oocyst of 45 micrometer contain large and small granules. Modified is and staining. It, it is the method of choice and a uh, red acid fast spheres again a uh, against a blue background is present it is the modified seal instant stain uh, then staining also done in specimen like a sputum bronchial washing other than stool the concentration technique like uh, sheathed sugar flotation technique and zinc sulfate flotation techniques are also used then fluorescent staining in aromine phenol or acridin orange then histopathological examination light and electron microscopy of the apical surface of the intestinal epithelium then biopsy specimen of jejunum for identification of cryptosporidium then serodiagnosis uh, antibody specific to cryptosporidium uh, pavomis detector anti-oocyst antibody which is, which is an important antibody in 
detected using arrays or immunofluorescence. Cryptosporidium antigen in stool detection also uh, done using ERISA. It is highly sensitive and specific. Then molecular diagnosis. Western blood technique by using 70 kilodalton or 27 kilodalton sporozoids antigen and also PCR detected viable cyst. Then about its treatment. Nitazosamide 500 mg BD for 3 days or paramomycin effective in AIDS patient. Antiretroviral therapy is also effective amelioration of the cryptosporidiosis. Then uh, supportive therapy like fluid electrolyte and uh, nutrient replacement. Then prevention by proper hygiene, boiling or filtration of the water as it is mainly waterborne disease. Then about cyclospora chitinensis. This is an important coccin parasite. It is originally cyanobacterium like body because photosynthesis organelle and autofluorescent particles are characteristics of blue green algae which is also present in this coccin parasite. Morphology. The oocyst is non-refractive sphere of 8 to 10 micrometer diameter and it contains two sporocyst. It is a oocyst which contains two sporocyst and each sporocyst contains two sporocytes. That is, each sporulated oocyst contains four sporocytes. Then about its life cycle. It is not similar to cryptosporidium. The men get infection by ingestion of the food and water contaminated with the sporulated oocyst. The ingested sporulated oocyst reaches the small intestine and where existation of the sporocyst releases crescenteric sporocytes. Then sporocytes infection in the intestinal cell where it undergoes two cycles of merogeny. The first generation meron contain 8 to 12 merocytes and the second generation meron contain 4 merocytes. Then type 2 merocytes develop into macro and microgametes and microgametes fertilizes with the macrogametes and forming unsporulated oocyst that is passed in the feces. And the unsporulated oocyst undergo can be its sporulation in the warm environment that is outside the body the maturation of the unsporulated oocyst occurs and the cycle is repeated. Then uh, asexual repression is also present in, inside the enterocytes. Then pathogenicity and clinical features. The transmission mainly through fecal route and the incubation period 1 to 7 days. Histopathological examination of the enterocytes show features of acute and chronic inflammation with the blending and atrophy of the villi and hyperplasia of the crypts. Then prolonged diarrhea, abdominal pain, low grade fever and uh, fatigue are also present. In immunocompromised patients, these infections are more severe. Then about lab diagnosis. First stool examination. Direct with mount for the demonstration of the oocyst in feces and also oocyst stained by Sir Nielsen stain and uh, acid fast stains uh, stains the red in color. If it is acid fast stain, the oocyst stain red in color. Then UV elimination of uh, unstained oocyst are autofluorescent. The figure E is showing the autofluorescence. Then histopathology. Biopsy specimen of the jejunum show villus atrophy and blunting of villi along with other inflammatory changes. Small bowel biopsy material by electron microscopy demonstrate the parasite. Then treatment and prevention. Corimaxazole BD for 7 days that is trimethoprim uh, 160 mg or sulfamethoxazole 800 mg is given BD for 7 days. For AIDS patient, long term supportive therapy is required and uh, prevention by good sanitary practice, adequate water treatment, proper washing of the fruits and vegetables. Thank you.